again, this is Frank Perry from Synergy Systems. Today we're going to be talking about the newest member of our family of power loggers. This would be the meter socket logger. Uh, we're just releasing it uh, in the month of uh, April. Uh, it's a model number PM2000 uh, meter socket logger. The unit comes in a bag, like you see here. Inside the bag will be a software, a CD-ROM software disk with each unit. The meter socket logger itself will be also obviously in the bag. On the back of the meter socket logger that we'll be shipping there will be a white neutral lead that you will connect to the neutral line uh, in the house. Also in the bag is an infrared communication cable. It goes from infrared on the bottom of the meter socket logger to RS-232 into your computer. If you don't have a computer, some of the new laptops don't have the RS-232 in them. Uh, they have, uh, for about $30 or $40, you can get an RS-232 to USB port adapter anywhere, Comp USA, Best Buy, uh, Circuit City, any of the standard computer type stores. And there is also a little collar here that goes around the meter, and we'll show you this in a few minutes, that <clears throat> will, you will, uh, the uh, infrared monitor here sets in here like this and reads the infrared off of the uh, very bottom of the meter socket logger directly into your computer. There's an LED uh, array there also that indicates the condition of the recording and so on that we'll go over with you in just a moment. There is also a wall plug charger here that plugs into the unit uh, that allows you to keep the unit plugged in and charged uh, while you're downloading it at your desk. There'll be a little bag in the unit in this bag will be a, another uh, neutral blade, if necessary, for either the 9 o'clock or the 6 o'clock position, and a jumper wire and a cotter pin. Uh, so if you do need to use these, uh, you can. It will be in each unit. The meter socket logger <clears throat> itself would set in this orientation here. There will be a 6 o'clock position and a 9 o'clock position here. You will remove, uh, the, the power company will remove uh, the meter off of the house. They will then place this in place and return the meter to here and then it will automatically uh, start logging. The conditions that the unit will automatically start logging under is if it sees a voltage from L1 to neutral and it doesn't see any current load at all, after 15 minutes it will begin to log anyway. If it sees as small as 100 milliamp current load, which is almost anything on in the house, <clears throat> it will then begin logging in one minute. So there's no buttons in here that you have to push to remember to push to start it before you go or anything like that. It will start itself automatically logging. The, we uh, measure L1 to neutral, L2 to neutral, and we measure, we do not compute, we measure L1 to L2 and we monitor 0 to 200 amps on L1 to neutral and L2 to neutral. The current sensor that we are using in our unit is exclusive, a Rogowski coil style, but it's not flexible. It's a hard coil using the Rogowski coil technology. And this allows us to read down to 0 amps. We don't uh, tail off our accuracy at, at, at below 5 amps. We can continue to read on below 5 amps all the way down to 0 amps. So if there's very little load in the house, typically at night uh, when people are asleep and nothing's really turned on, we are still recording. The unit comes standard with a 7-day recording time frame embedded into the firmware of the unit. We also have two set points set at 5% above and below the nominal 120. This means that the set points that we use are 126 and 114. This from surveying most of the power companies in the United States is what most of you are interested in. Those set points can be changed with the software program called PM Screen, which we'll be showing you a little bit later. The standard is 126 volts and 114 volts and that's 5% plus and minus above the 120 volt nominal. 
the 0 to 200 amps is always in place. There are no set points on the current channels. Like this. Now I'm going to plug in the uh, wall charger into the unit. That plugs in right over here. This is what you would do if you were normally going to be downloading the unit at your desk. I want to give you an idea of what this LED array, uh, the COM array we're talking about down here is like. Uh, these LEDs right here, uh, they will uh, blink at different rates and different colors. They're green and red LED. They're a dual color LED and depending on whether they're green or red there's an intelligence about it and there's a listing in the manual that will let you know if you see a certain type of a flash it means it's ready to record. Another type of a flash will indicate other conditions. This LED array will uh, give you uh, conditions of various different aspects of the meter socket logger. <clears throat> the meter socket logger uh, will uh, tell you, I mean the LED array will tell you that the unit is charging, that the unit has power between L1 and neutral. It will also tell you that the unit is recording and it could also tell you that the unit has memory in it that has not been downloaded or it could tell you that there is memory in it but it's about to be erased because it knows that it has been downloaded. So there's no chance of you forgetting to start or stop a unit there's no chance of you accidentally erasing data uh, and you will know also the condition of the voltage as soon as you plug it in. There is uh, a certain condition of blinking that will let you know that you are at the 125 volt level or higher between 125 and 126 which is the high end last volt before you get out of spec on that 5% range we talked about. Also the LED will flash to let you know if you're down between 115 and 114 volts. Also at the last volt before you get to an out of spec condition. So as soon as you plug the unit in you'll be able to tell if you're between the 124 to 115, uh, excuse me, 125 to 115 or if you're actually approaching that 126 or the 114. And that's all illustrated in color in the manual, so you know exactly what it is that you're looking for. Uh, this is also the uh, area where you will pick up the infrared communication. Let me show you how you would do that if it was time to download a unit or program a unit. We have this collar that we showed you earlier, and the way this will work is this Velcro and you'll just basically put it around the unit like this. You'll take the infrared sensor and just pushes right into the unit here. Get this down here and it hangs right here at the COM port. This would be sitting on your desk and then you would take the 9-pin D-sub, plug it into your uh, port on your computer that you're doing the downloading in or if you need to, the, like I mentioned earlier, you can get an RS-232 to a USB converter and that would uh, about $30 or $40 just about anywhere that you want to get it at. And don't forget we have the 9 o'clock position and there will be a 6 o'clock position here where you can put the extra blade that we give you here if you need to pick up a neutral as opposed to using the neutral wire connection that was on the back if you have a neutral blade and then there's a jumper also included in here with a cotter pin that will allow you to jumper from this blade to the neutral connection on the inside of the unit. Now remember, we want to be very clear that the unit comes standard from the factory with a seven day recording time period and set points set at 126 volts and 114 volts but you can change those set points if you want to because that's where you get your warning LED indication. You can change them to whatever you like and you can change the time recording period from seven days to whatever you like also. Now, I'm going to unplug the uh, wall charger from the unit because we want to talk about <clears throat> some of the different setups that come in the unit. Uh, there's eight different setups that come in the unit. The first setup 
records all three voltages. And remember, we do record L1 to L2, 0 to 300 volts. We're the only one in the industry that can do that uh, with a meter socket logger. Uh, <clears throat> that 0 to 300 volts is a measured value and recorded. We do L1 to neutral, L2 to neutral, and the two 0 to 200 amp uh, L1 and L2 current legs. And we use a solid toroid style Rogowski coil technology to do that which allows us to literally read down to zero amps. So we are zero to 300 volts on L1 to L2 and zero to 200 amps on both of our legs of current. The first setup is a standard setup that records all five of those parameters. The second setup is a standard setup but it also includes power, watts, bars, power factor, and KVA. The third setup is the standard setup of three voltages and two currents, but it also includes harmonics on both the voltage channels and the current channels. Then the next setup records everything. By the way, this is... By everything, we mean it will record all three voltages, both currents, the power uh, capacity that we mentioned earlier, and harmonics all together at the same time. We have a 16-channel unit here with one megabyte of memory and single-cycle adaptive store, which is patented. That's why we're able to do all these measurements at once. There are no options. You, when you buy this meter socket logger, you get everything. There's a fifth setup that is voltage only, a sixth setup that is current only, and then there's a seventh setup that is voltage and harmonics, and the eighth setup is current only and harmonics. So we want to stress these are exclusive features that we have here. One megabyte of memory standard. The uh, single cycle adaptive store which is a patented storage technique which enables our unit to record for 30 days and if you have any single cycle outages or anomalies that occur during that 30 day period we will catch them all regardless of the number of channels that you have recording. It's very important to understand with this massive amount of memory that we've put into this unit as standard that we can record for as long a time as you need to, typically at the house uh, complaint location. Now we're going to show you how to do a download. We're going to go to the computer screen now because we want you to be successful the very first time you try to download the unit. Remember, our unit here with the one me megabyte of memory will download up to 230 0.4 kilobaud, depending on if your computer can achieve those levels. With one megabyte of memory, you want to be able to download these things fast. Typically 115 kilobaud or uh, 230 kilobaud is what you really should use on the one megabyte. And you get through this in just a few minutes. Thank you very much. We'll go to the computer now. Every unit that's shipped, as I stated earlier, comes with a CD-ROM containing both the Pronto data analysis and presentation software and the PM screen, which is the configuration software for the unit here. Our computer is hooked up to the meter socket logger now, and we're going to double-click on PM screen and establish communication with the meter. I'll center this for you here. Remember always the upper left hand corner of the screen is like a calculator clear key and that takes you back to the very beginning screen which we see here. This is the greeting screen which is the Power Master Meter Socket Logger PM2000 series. You would then go to continue and just click on the continue button. And over here you see an icon that signifies that the unit is the battery is charging so we do have power from L1 to neutral. You don't want to walk, uh, I mean this is what keeps the unit running and where it receives its power from. Here we show the, show the microchip memory here with a T on it meaning that the unit is timing out because it does not see a current load yet and so remember after 15 minutes it will start recording voltage only but as soon as there's a current load that appears it only takes one minute and then it starts itself recording. This is a uh, uh, Rogalski coil, shows you connections, voltage, and current. Uh, this is like a phaser diagram that really doesn't apply to anything when you're recording on the house here. And it does say low signals here because this is just sitting on your desk being waited to, waiting to be downloaded. It's not really plugged in 
to a house anywhere. You would click on the next key and you get to your main menu. And we'll go through each one of these buttons here for you. Uh, first of all, um, this is a start button here and this is a power off button here. Uh, those are pretty self-explanatory. The hookup button, uh, if we click on that, it shows us a split phase uh, L1 to neutral, L2 to neutral, Here's your voltage hookup for L1 to neutral, your voltage hookup for L2 to neutral, and your L1 to L2 voltage hookup. And then here is a description showing that one of the Rogowski coils is around L1, the other Rogowski coil is around L2. It is the only hookup available, of course, on a meter socket logger. Remember, in our PM3000 and 6003 phase units, there are several classic wiring configurations that are supported, of course. Hitting the upper uh, left-hand key would take us back to the main menu here. And we uh, go to the display button here. When we click on display, we're shown the phaser diagram again, which you can look at, but you see there's no signals present here because we are just setting on the desk hooked to the computer, remember. You would see a couple of vectors here for L1 and L2, and L1 to L2, a third vector, and then on the current one you would see two vectors here. Going back with the upper left hand corner, we go to a list of all channels. List of all channels, and I'm showing channel 1, 2, and 3 in the top half of the display, and channel 3, 4, and 5 in the bottom half of the display. If I want to see channel 4, 5, and 6, I can see my two currents, L1, L2 and the beginning of my power uh, channels, which would be our KW. And if I continue to scroll down here, I have KVAR, KVA, power factor, and so on. If I, you're able to display whatever you want, wherever you want. If I click right here in the upper display, the scroll keys move up to the top half, and then I can just scroll down to, to any of the channels that I want up here. So you're able to look at uh, an array of six different uh, signals uh, in real time to see what's going on. If uh, you just click on the spacing here, you can uh, make the font be much bigger so that if for some reason you've forgotten your glasses when you're sitting at your computer, you can still you know, see what's going on. That's the listing of all the channels. Six at a time or two at a time. We go back and back one more time. Then we have the configure key. When we push the configure key, <clears throat> you would be able to see what is the current configuration. Remember, there's eight different ones, or what the available configurations are. And in this case here, we can look at the current configuration, and we see that the current configuration is configuration number two, which is your standard three voltages and two currents. Remember, we do measure L1 to L2, so it's three voltages with our unit. And power, watch bars, power factor, VA. If we, want, if we didn't want this, we could go back, go to configure, and look at the available configurations. And here we see the eight configurations we discussed earlier. Configuration 1 is the standard, 3 voltages, 2 currents. Configuration 2 is the standard plus power. Configuration 3 is the standard plus harmonics, if we scroll down here. Configuration 4 is the standard plus power and harmonics. Remember, we don't have options. These are all included when you buy our unit. The power calculations, the harmonics monitoring are all standard on our unit. Uh, uh, configuration number 5 is voltages only. Configuration number six, our currents only. Configuration number seven, our voltage and harmonics. And configuration number eight, our current and harmonics. Most of the time, we think that most people would be using the standard, which is voltage and harmonics, or standard with power, or standard with harmonics. I mean, uh, excuse me, configuration number one is standard, three voltages and two currents. I misspoke. Going back. Uh, if we go to our current configuration, if you need to do any editing of the configuration, you can change the record mode in time. This is where we explain that you can record 
uh, uh, the standard time is set up for seven days, but you can change the seven days to whatever you want just by clicking on it and plugging in whatever is appropriate. Like I could put in, uh, let me, uh, excuse me, backspace, backspace, and clear it. I could put in three, and if I click on days here, gives me choices of days, hours, minutes, or seconds. So if I wanted it to be three days, I could click on days. If I wanted it to be three hours, I could change it to three hours and then say OK. And then now we've changed from seven days to three hours. You can see how easy that is to do just to go over it again. If I wanted to backspace and change it back to the original of seven, and I click on days and say OK, and it's back to seven days. We also have First in, first out is turned off right now. However, you could turn that on. And what that does is it's a rolling memory. After the memory gets full, it starts overwriting the older data with newer data. The storage mode is adaptive store, single cycle adaptive store. We can't stress enough. This is our patented storage technique, which allows us to record for long periods of time and still give you single cycle resolution on RMS data regardless of the uh, time of the recording, within reason, 30 days or less, typically. We'll just say OK. We'll leave it here at that. Now, the, re <clears throat> the input signals here, this shows you where you have your voltages 0 to 300 volts on all three voltage channels. We're capable of doing 0 to 300 volts. And uh, this is just V1 and V2 right here. We'll scroll down in a moment. And here's current number one, and that's a 200 amp using that solid Rogowski coil toroid technology. And here's I2 for the second current channel. And then here's uh, voltage number three is your L to L, which would be your line one to line two, again at zero to 300 volts. We do not compute it, we measure it. So any neutral problems will be picked up. Uh, and then uh, that's our input signals. Then we have the recording channels here. And you can see in this setup that we have here, we have channels 1, 2, and 3. L1 to neutral, L2 to neutral, and line to line are all volts AC, and they are on. If we scroll down to channels 4, 5, and 6, we see channel 4 is current number 1, L1. Channel 5 is current on L2, and channel 6 is KW, real power. Channel 7 is VARS, channel 8 is KVA. Channel 9 is power factor, and then channel 10 is unspecified and so on, but if we had some of the other setups here, these might possibly show up as harmonics channels uh, on either voltage or current inputs. Uh, you can uh, use any one of the eight at any time. Always to go back, remember to push the upper left-hand corner. It's like a calculator clear key. It takes you back one step in the programming. Once you've uh, got it back to this point here, if you're at a customer that is perhaps a nuisance situation that you go back to all the time, you might want to do a save as at this point. And we actually do give you a keyboard here where you can go in and you can actually type in the uh, name and address of the location uh, you might want to type in a, a work order number that's on your job, paperwork. Uh, there could be several ways that we allow you to enter a significant name here, not some cryptic eight-character abbreviation that you have to figure out what it was later on. Again, hitting the upper left-hand corner key takes you back one step in the programming. And we'll go back to our original main menu here. In the Explore area here, allows you to go in and look at old recordings that might have been made. There is one recording in here. If you were to click on it, you can review it by clicking on the review button here. It tells you when you started and stopped the recording, what recording mode you were in, the battery condition, and the temperature that this unit was subjected to. And we also record the maximum, the minimum, and the average of each of the recording channels. And that you're allowed to see that immediately before you even download data. You can, of course, delete the, uh, what is in here just by selecting it and clicking the delete key. If you delete something, we give you one keystroke here where you can undo the delete and retrieve it back if you didn't mean to delete it. 
and you see it reappears. However, if you go and you delete it and you do one more keystroke, now it's gone and uh, your memory is clear at this point. Also, I would like to show you that there's a help screen underneath every button that you go into. If you just, instead of tapping the button, if you hold your mouse button down, it tells you what this key is going to do. It's going to display measurements. On the configure, if you, you hold the button down, it's going to tell you, it sets up the system parameters. You may also load, save, or edit previous configurations. So you really don't need a manual with any of our units because the help sensitive holding down of any of the keys that appear at any point in the programming will tell you exactly what you're about to do. This is the uh, uh, PM2000, uh, 3000, and 6000 all use this same program to do uh, various configurations and so on on any of our family of products. All of our product family, the PM2000 meter socket logger, the PM3000 three-phase logger, and the PM6000W with the waveform capture on the three-phase logger, all use the same Pronto program for uh, data analysis and uh, downloading, and they use the PM screen program that you're seeing here right now. They all use the same program. Uh, very easy to use. Uh, and the better you know Windows, the easier the programs are to work with. Now we're going to show you how to download uh, your unit so you're successful the first time out of the box here. Uh, you will go to the Pronto program and turn on the Pronto program. We're connected through the infrared port to the unit. You go to playback. Pronto's connecting to the instrument. I just finished downloading. You saw how fast it did that. Uh, remember, we're working at a very fast download rate here. Now, granted, we didn't have very much uh, data in the unit, but it, even with one full mega data, it shouldn't take more than uh, a few minutes to download at the higher 230 kilobaud rate. Uh, playback completed. Do you want to erase the logger memory? We recommend uh, that you don't until you look at the data, so we'll say no. Do you want to start recording again? We will say no. And then now it gives us select a project for the playback of data. And this is where you create a virtual manila folder to put the data in. And every time you go back to this investigation location, you will always put the data back in here into the same folder that you create. Uh, therefore, uh, it, over a period of 10 or even 20 years, all the data for that particular address and that customer will be in one location. Uh, it's uh, actually quite wonderful the way this uh, program here does housekeeping for you. Uh, we're going to say we want to create a new folder. We click on new here and we're going to call this our test folder, test number one we'll call it. And we're going to save that folder. Here you're allowed to put in titles, subject, in any comments you want to type in here, you may, so that this, all this data will always follow the, uh, the uh, actual data that was recorded. So if you have any comments to make about the location, the customer, or what occurred during the investigation, it will always stay with the data. We'll just say OK at this point. It shows our path here where we're going to be storing the data. It's on the C drive, Pronto 4W, underneath projects, test number one, because that's what we named it. And we always click on autosave. And it saved the data. Now here is a situation where you can create templates if you always want to look at the data in a certain way. Like for example, you want to see all three voltages on one graph and you want to see the two currents on another graph, or you want to see all three voltages on separate graphs. You can set that up in this template area here and it saves you a lot of clicking later on. But we're just going to cancel through this now here and we make this big and you can see right here we've got three channels of voltage, two channels of current, and watts, vars, power factor, and KVA. If I wanted to uh, take a look at one of these voltages, I could click on the voltage that was L1 to neutral. I could actually click on as many of these as I want, 
But for illustrative purposes, we'll only click on one of them here. We go to graph. There's a six-step wizard here that you set up only once, and then you just go to finish. And here you have the data, and you can see various different spikes occurring here. We didn't have it on an input. It was just sitting here on the desk, and that's why you don't see any of the typical voltages you might see. And you have the ability to zoom in and zoom out on various different things that you might see. Here's a couple of little spikes that occurred here. You can see them that occurred, and so on. After you've got the data all in here, uh, there's another video. If you go back to the training tab on our website, and it'll show you how to manipulate all the data much more extensively. The purposes of this video was just to show you how to do the download, and we'll go in here and close out. We thank you very much for your support and loyalty to our family of PM products. Thank you.